It's Mike Hagan, and 9 o'clock every Friday morning means it's time for Open Mic Radio. We're going to start things off with a song here from Tony Lotvin. This one is called Stars in the Sea. Show you the way to go to the bay of the sea and sky. You are bound to be backwards till the day that you die. There are stars in the sea.
All right, KOPN Columbia, 89.5 FM. It is uh, Mike Hagan, and you're listening to Open Mic Radio. It's Friday morning, the 16th of November, and a lovely day, actually. Nice day, high around 50 today. I think it should be about that for the rest of the weekend, so get a little bit of a break from the cold, and hope you get out there and enjoy it. Like I said, 16th of uh, November, we're down here at 915 East Broadway, if you happen to be in the neck of the woods, you're welcome to stop by and say hi. Every Friday morning we do this, Open Mic Radio. Uh, before we get going with the program this morning, I'd like to say a big thank you to John Galbraith, who was down here with me last Friday. Had a real fun show with John. He played some beautiful songs for us. And then, uh, actually on Saturday night, his band, the John Galbraith Trio, performed at Cafe Berlin with... A band called St. Gnome, which is Barry and those guys. Are you familiar, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Ray Fitzgerald and uh, uh, her partner Ian played. And Ray's one, one of my favorites around town. I think she's just r- remarkable. So anyway, uh, big thanks to John and uh, everybody else for putting on some great performances last Saturday down at Cafe Berlin. Today's program, I have uh, Tony Lotvin in the studio with me today. Tony is an extremely accomplished musician. He is a saxophonist and a flautist, and he has lots of different projects around town, among uh, which are the Daves and the Fried Crawdaddies, and we'll talk with Tony and find out a little bit more about what, what he's up to. In fact, we'll say hello right now. Hey, Tony. Good morning, Mike. How are you? I'm, I'm wonderful. Glad to be here with you. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for coming down. It turns out your wife's going to be here a little bit later as well, huh? Yeah, she'll be along with Diane after, after this, uh-huh. promoting the Fall into Art art show at Parkade coming up this weekend. All right. Well, it's a family affair here at KOPN today. we got Tony Lotfin in the studio. And then, yeah, speaking of the arts... Uh, Comes out at 10 o'clock with Diana Moxon, and stick around for that program after this one is completed. But for now, we're going to talk about music and uh, and about Tony and some of the things that he's been involved with over the years. Let's get a little background, though. Are you where, where are you from originally, Tony? Uh, grew up in Springfield, Missouri, uh-huh. and then uh, left right after, literally right after high school. <laughs> really, and, this is and, up and out, and came here, and then ventured it out from here. From here, and ended up returning and. Uh, Spent a lot of years here, raised my family here, and everything. Are you a Mizzou graduate? I think you are. Yes. Uh huh. What uh, What'd you study at Mizzou? Actually, you know, uh, are you familiar with the general studies program? I am. Yeah. Yeah. They were kind of create your own uh, path, you know. Uh-huh. So I was actually in the uh, first twenty five students that were admitted to the general studies program when it started. Really, it was one of the. the so that was sort of like a flagship thing, and when yeah. it, when when it began, you were one yeah. of the first. It's created by uh, Bill Bondison. Huh. And uh, who was um, teaching humanity to his professor in philosophy and has, um, has taught medical ethics and so forth a lot of yeah a lot been of there for, the for a long long time right yeah yeah all right so um, music you're yeah. a, a quite accomplished musician so when did you start uh, getting involved in music and and do you have family parents brothers and sisters that are musicians as well how'd you get into it uh you know my sister and my brother both um uh learned how to play my sister kept playing like Mm. i have uh over the years she plays um violin we were trained classically she plays violin but she also plays mandolin so she plays some klezmer music and things like that oh cool um but my parents know my parents were uh immigrants from uh from uh, Europe, my dad came from Russia after the um, Russian Revolution, and my mom came from France after uh, escaping the Holocaust. Remarkable. And so I'm actually first generation American. But my mom's from France, so she always had a lot of wanted us to be involved with the arts and uh, got us started on music very early age. In fact, I was pretty silent. You know, I'm still kind of a quiet kind of guy, and uh, except when you got a horn in front of you. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I, I'm. They told me I didn't start talking till I was several years old. Huh, My sister talked incessantly. Apparently, <laughs> that's probably why. And so they'd ask. You know, we had family dinners and a lot of people, and everybody would talk at the same time. <laughs> and so I just kind of marveled at what was going on, and. Um, they would ask me a question, my my sister would answer. So um, 
I started on, they started me on recorder lessons when I was four years old. So I, I think I may have actually started playing an instrument before I actually started talking. <laughs> so that's kind of the way things have gone. That's awesome. What was the first instrument that you, that you played? Uh, a recorder. A recorder. Uh, yeah. There was a lady so that, that had a, one. that taught recorder. We had a recorder uh, quartet. Uh, and we, she taught us how to play, and we. And that's like the little, little plastic one that kids have, yeah. right? I mean, yep. it has a few holes in it, almost like an Irish whistle or something yep. like that. Yep, basic recorder. And then when I was seven, which for me was in basically first between first and second grade, uh-huh. they switched me to a flute, and I had private flute lessons, pretty much all the way from then all the way through high school. Yeah, I think most people around here recognize you as a saxophone player primarily. Um, yeah, I didn't start playing saxophone until I was like 23 years old. Remarkable. And so uh, do you play the flute publicly or perform? I do. Often? I don't do it a lot. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, they're just um, I do it some. I did it this week. Matter of fact, I did a little uh, flute jazz trio over the VA with uh, Zach Beeson on bass and Travis McFarlane on piano. Awesome. It was a... Um, uh, it was a Thanksgiving dinner for the homeless vets, and uh, it was sponsored by the We Always Swing Jazz Series, oh, right. and uh, Veterans United underwrote it. Very good. Yeah, where was, was, really where was cool. that at? At the VA hospital. Awesome. You have, yeah. a, you have a good turnout? Yeah. There was about 100, 100 people they served, uh, plus the staff, and... and um, it was thoroughly enjoyable. It was absolutely wonderful. All right, great. How long did you, did you play a full set? Or did you play a couple? Or you we played a couple hours. Very good. Yeah, um, I just stuck on the flute, played jazz flute, <laughs> which I, I do okay. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Uh, and uh, but most of what I play around town, people are familiar, more familiar with the saxophone because it's you know with the Crawdaddies and with the Daves. That's more fitting with the style of music. Right. Even though I do. Pull it out every once in a while with the Crawdaddies on some songs. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, there's a couple of tracks on the CD that you gave me last week where you where you actually play some flute. Yeah, toward the end of the of the disc. Yeah, there actually there was a couple tracks I gave you with uh, Chris Graham. Chris mm-hmm. Graham is a vibes player from uh, grew up here mm-hmm. Rockbridge. He's been in Chicago for about the last six seven years, and just a phenomenal player. And he had put together a quartet um, to play some of his music and it was vibes well he did vibes and some percussion and orchestral chimes and marimba cool and uh bass and uh, uh drums drums was uh oh gosh uh steve robertson i believe is the last name uh-huh. who uh ended up going to new york he was a drummer with the white the band white rabbits huh yeah and, i remember the white rabbits yeah, yeah. And, they were great. And uh, so Steve and Zach, I can't remember Zach's last name, bass player, ended up in Philadelphia. And Chris and myself, and we, Chris shoved us up the learning curve for this um, wild music we did at uh, uh, one of Sutu's events at, on stage at the Missouri Theater. All right. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your influences. Who, who influenced you a lot along the way as you've been playing? Uh, You mean, well, you know, the biggest influence on me was a particular flute teacher I had hmm. in Springfield. His name was Alver Weir, uh, and um, I started with him. He had come from Philadelphia to teach at, uh, now it's Missouri State, then it was SMS, and he played all the woodwinds and piano and a bunch of different things. Phenomenal, both a jazz player and a... um, uh, classical player so i was about i think end of the sixth grade going into seventh grade when i uh, started working with him and i i credit him with a huh. lot of different things i mean i was a good player i mean i, I practiced a lot and and i learned a lot of stuff and but he taught me how to get tone and how to play expressively hmm. uh and he shoved me also up the learning curve i was i was playing Literally at the contest, you know the state contest they they have for, uh-huh. for high schoolers, right? Junior high. I was playing what he told me were masters level pieces by that time, and then going into my junior year, he had uh, a brain aneurysm. Twenty four hours, he was gone. Wow! And that I was devastated, mm. uh, and I 
um, I had some private teachers after that to finish high school, but none of them compared to Albert, where he was the biggest influence I ever had. It's amazing recently. what a good teacher can do, you yeah. know? And everybody, if you're out there, you're, we're all lucky if we've had at least one yeah. that was able to kind of... Yeah. You know, I ha- as far as famous people, obviously I can name a whole bunch oh, yeah. of different people. Oh, yeah, of course, right. Um, locally... Of course, Jerome Wheeler mm. uh, and and Lyle Harris, uh, great guitar player, um, and Glenn Ward, um, Kansas City Street Band. Mm. They all had big influences on me to give me opportunities to play. Um, and especially, I'd say, out of that group, uh, you know, Glenn invited me to be in a band that was a precursor to the street band, and then, of course, in the street band. And um, that was when I started playing saxophone basically you said man you're a great great player but you're gonna have to learn how to play saxophone because we're going to do r&b uh-huh. i said okay i went out and got a saxophone and started teaching myself and that's how that came about that's pretty amazing what uh what about songwriting there's a this is the first time that i've actually in the last few days listened to music that was original compositions that you'd written um i think most people are probably not familiar with the stuff that that that, that we're playing this morning no there's a few things that the crawdaddies do there's a lot of stuff that nobody's doing they're basically studio or just demo mm-hmm. um because i'm not a guitar player i mean i i i know enough guitar to maybe convey an idea to another musician and, right, right. and piano I've, I've gotten a little bit better on piano uh, in fact there's a cut there I actually play piano on but I have um, I have brought those in just to kind of expose people to them different styles so I, I end up kind of writing differently and some of these things I don't even play on I just wanted to produce them like right. Stars in the Sea I had this, this idea for going forth on that song I write a lot of lyrics. I have a ton of lyrics, and and when I just start writing songs, they come from different genres, and I just kind of look at the lyrics and what's in my head, and and go, well, it sounds like a reggae song. This sounds like a country song. This sounds like a ballad. This sounds like a whatever. Right? Yeah. There's a bu- there's a bunch of different styles yeah. of stuff on this uh, on this show. Let's um. Take a minute here and let's play something else, I think. Okay. How about that? All right, we heard uh, Stars in the Sea to start us, off, start us off. Is there anything in particular that you'd like me to play? Uh, no, whatever you, whatever you want to pick. All right, I like this one called Full Moon Blues. Even though it's not quite a full moon, it will be in the next few days here. Yeah. So. And this is one that the Crawdaddies, this is one that you guys we have added to our repertoire. And and um, then Pete Skolka and Sean Hennessy can go play some kick-ass guitar on it. <laughs> all right so here you guys go this is a song originally composed by tony lockman and performed here by uh, who, who's oh, performing yeah. on uh, a lot of these songs I know uh, you Pete know Swolka and a lot of different people uh of course pete's on a lot of them because i did uh, all the most of this recording his, down there in his studio mm-hmm. um i have different singers i like singing i'm getting better at singing but i've always played with some wonderful singers and so i ask some of them to come in and do the vocals on these things so I could just produce and sit back and enjoy it. Uh, this one, Stars in the Sea, John Diagostino did the lead, and myself and Pete and Jim and Laura Carter did all the backgrounds. And then... Who's playing the drums? Uh, Phil Sean. Oh, Johnson's great. Johnson's playing the drums. Of course. Um, uh, Pete's playing guitar. Uh, Sean Hennessy's also playing some guitar. Mm-hmm. Pete's... There's some keyboard, a little bit of keyboard. Um... Uh, on Full Moon Blue, Sean's playing slide. Uh, Pete's playing it's regular electric. Straight away, yeah. Uh, and um, Kevin Hennessy's playing bass. All right. Well, that's the background on this one. It's called Full Moon Blues. Original music from Tony Lockman. You're listening to it on Open Mic Radio, KOPN, Columbia. I got the full moon blues thinking of you. I got the full moon blues. The full moon blues Sitting right here With the full moon blues Baby, I need your love Under the moon up above Honey, I need you right now Listen to me how I got the full moon Yeah. 
That's the Full Moon Blues. Original music from Tony Lotvin. He's my guest in the studio this morning. Good stuff, Tony. Thanks. That's awesome. When did you write that? Oh, God. <laughs> I remember the years. The big gap between some of the stuff when it was written and when it was finished. Is that right? Um, I think we recorded that maybe five year, four or five years ago. It may have been longer. I can right. lose track. And uh, same guys performing on that particular piece? Yeah, that yeah that one's uh, Phil Sean on drums right. and uh, Kevin Hennessy on bass, Skull uh, on guitar, Skull guitar, Sean Hennessy on slide, mm-hmm. and um, uh, John D'Agostino on vocals. Doing the vocals, all right. Kind of yeah. interesting, you know, producing my own songs, but not even though when we do it live. Uh, since I started playing harp uh, recently. I, I do throw some harp in on this song and I do the background vocals with John uh-huh. I mean the you know the harmonies with him when we do it live have you written most of the stuff on your own or do you, or do you collaborate with, with with other people on some of your writing I, I do some collaborating you know uh, but a lot of the stuff I the basic song I wrote mm-hmm. completely uh, Stars in the Sea that went through a lot of different rewrites uh, on the lyrics I went through a lot of different versions of it and uh, trying to fine tune it and wrote the basic song, and then Pete came up with the idea for the lick and and the repeating stars in the sea mm-hmm. toward the uh, at the uh, in, for the chorus. Mm. And then um, same thing when we when we start recording it, I had all kinds of ideas for it, and so I just sat and because there's a lot of different layers in there. All right. Okay. Uh, then there's songs like um, um, there's just a song sketch in there. Even the Crawdays are doing this now. A song called New Day, which is a um, a funk, heavy funk tune. We've gotten great response to it, and it's about um, it's really about the matriarchy taking over the patriarchy. That's what it's, what it's basically about. <laughs> I wrote that probably eight years ago. I'm people like to tell stories about the past. I I like to think about the future and and then uh, and go from there. Yeah. But that one yeah. um, actually, I I had the whole idea, whole song together. But uh, my son Jeremiah, who plays bass, mm-hmm. actually really ended up cutting a beautiful bass part as a bass led song. And then uh, Pete and Phil Sean were in the studio with me to to uh, put that track down, or that, right. at least that sketch. Maybe that's one that we'll play here in a little bit, huh? Yeah, it's a really it's you can get a feel for it. People can kind of hear me barking out the commands to everybody on the sections, but it it's a, it's a really really good song. All right, all really right. Like that, that one, and that one's one. called um, uh, New, New Days, Days coming, coming, right? Yep. All right, we're gonna listen to that one here in a few minutes. Uh, but first, we'll say hello to Miss Diana Moxon, who's trying to be quiet coming here in the studio. Well done, though, Diana. <laughs> Also, I must say hello to my uh, local 
Columbia trash man who comes by every Friday. I didn't get to say hello. I'm sorry. He's he's probably listening. I think I think he must listen every Friday morning. I hope he does. In fact, I'm going to find out who drives that truck and invite him to listen every Friday morning so he can see, hear himself on the radio busting the the trash dumpsters around back there. So anyway, my guest is Tony Lotman in the studio with me this morning. Tony was uh, kind enough to provide me with some original music and put a disc together for me. Uh, a week or so ago and I've been listening to it in my car for the last week and there's some great stuff in here and since we're on the topic of a song called A New Day Is Coming let's just play that one now alright huh? All right, we're going to do that this one is A New Day Is Coming and let's see that is the sixth track so yep. is it right here song sketch alright and uh, you listen to it here on KOPN Columbia Open Mic Radio and uh, this is Tony Lotvin <laughs> Let's not 
All right. That one's called The New Day Is Coming. Original music from Tony Lotvin. Great stuff, Tony. Thanks. That's an excellent song. That's a fun one. It's really fun. I mean, we, when the Crawdays started playing that and people flocked to the dance floor. Of course, I'm not in this recording because that's just the I was singing. Well, I am, you know, singing and, and uh, on this song sketch and getting our by through the arrangement but and you're live i get to i i just take over the saxophone solo <laughs> oh, yeah. in the middle of it and then we have a big drum break at the end and and with two guitars and sean is playing with us with pete we we have two guitars so we actually have a little more funky rhythms between them going on right, it's really right. really and, you, and you well. said your son is playing the bass my son Jeremiah is playing the bass on this one. Wow, he's a skilled bass player. Yeah, he's a skilled musician and a writer. He just he just came in the other day to the house. And they came over for dinner. He goes, "Well, I finished my my screenplay." And I and actually, it's not a screenplay, but um, what do they call it for a movie? Oh, I guess um, it is a screenplay. I guess or, it's a screenplay or, or a script or yeah. And uh, I knew we knew he'd been working on. It. He goes, yeah, I'm done. I go, how long? You know, it's like a oh, hundred some odd pages, and he's got it <laughs> out. People reading it and critiquing it, and he's been involved with a uh, group of people that run True False and um, where they do readings and so forth. He's really excited about it. He's quite a talented kid, and not kid anymore. Pretty soon he'll be on Diana's show. Yeah, <laughs> and he's a local guy. Yeah, he hasn't really played out much lately, but he was involved with um, you know School of Rock mm-hmm. and all that. He sure. was early days of that. I think he came in second or won uh, Battle of the Bands competitions at, with uh, had a band had the, one of the best names for a band ever. <laughs> he had one of the bands he had uh, was called Graffiti Out Loud. Nice, I do like and the graffiti like, out loud. Has, yeah, the heavy kind of a Zeppelin funk sound with rapping over the top of it. And then he uh, he did about six months with the Hipnecks when the Brian K was sure. overseas, mm-hmm. filled in for Brian and uh, played with um, uh, the Stingrays. Yeah, um, and several other things. So he's plays bass, started as a drummer, um, played. Um, uh, jazz drums at high school and a lot of rock we had our garage since we live in the country became like <laughs> the center stage for garage bands we had it was like a two-car garage and the middle of it was just band equipment and then box and like everything else that we owned stuck around it and it was constant since there's no noise or thing out there we had right. a lot of people that are in their late 20s and 30s right now uh, around Columbia they're playing learned how to play through our there, garage huh? yeah yeah well I'll tell you ha- having a place like that yeah. is invaluable for young musicians you gotta have a place to play and you gotta be able to turn it up and uh, and experiment you know yeah. and that's the way you get that's exactly. the way you get better so. exactly alright well that's awesome I love what you've been doing so uh, you've got a couple of projects that I'm aware of of course you play with the Fried Crawdaddies and have for some time and in the last couple of years i guess you've become part of the days which yeah, is, i've been playing with the days last couple of years it's really i really like it. it's really fun yeah so that's dave angle dave dernley and dave lotvin for that particular project they don't call you tony do they yeah they call me dave yeah, of course everybody's a dave that's right if play. you're playing with the days you're therefore called dave so all right well i love uh, both of those projects what do you got coming up you got anything uh, any any uh, events coming up um well yeah actually the first friday um the Crawdaddies always have always the last couple of years play every first Friday. Do the Rose thing at Rose, and so the next one is December seventh, which is going to be uh, my sixty fifth birthday party. That's right. That's right. Um, and so we're going to have a birthday party at at Rose during happy hour. Fantastic. And we'll have a few, maybe a few friends come in to sit in, and we'll have a good time. And that's a Friday, of it course. It is a Friday. All right, so... Uh, Just hope that it's not like, you know, zero <laughs> degrees and three three layers of ice outside or yeah. something. Yeah, hopefully it's like it is today. We got a nice day out there today. You never know. If you, uh, I think it was two years ago on uh, in December. It was like 65. We ended up playing out in the park, so I'm going, well, maybe we... Maybe we'll get those two or three days. You never you know? know. In mid-Missouri, you never yeah. know. All right, what about the days? What do you guys got planned? I know you do the Lucky's thing pretty often. When's the next gig out at Lucky's? Yeah, we're, we're not doing Lucky's right now. Um, um, gosh, 
I don't know what we have coming up. I think we might have a, a private party and stuff. We were actually uh, rehearsing last night, trying to figure out where our next gig was. A little lean in the month of December, <laughs> but we've been playing Log Boat and Broadway Brewery and uh, various other events. We did a, a thing, um, a happy hour. We may have a happy hour, and there's some coming up for the day. So being a, a small group and being acoustic, we've been doing gigs in small uh, places, corners and of, of uh, restaurants and places you can't really fit a full band right right right. well it's great and if you ever get a chance to see these guys make sure you make sure you get out there and see them the daves or the fried karate is always really fun to see both of those both those projects we do have a in the middle of another cd for the crawdaddies and then uh, all the stuff we're playing today i'm trying to figure out what to do with (laughs) all right let's talk a little bit quickly about what is happening around town tonight at the blue note we have the socal royale this is a tribute to the 90s west coast scene which i was kind of a fan of i loved i loved sublime and no doubt and i liked the chili peppers for a while even though i thought their most recent stuff isn't that great but their early records were really good so anyway you got some uh, some 90s west coast stuff going on at the blue note tonight tomorrow night at the blue note alec davis he's a local country guy i think you're familiar with him i think Yes, a little bit. Yeah, he's he's a, a younger guy. Uh, does country. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of his guitars is. Uh, we've got several people playing with him, but um, some of them work out at at Palin, mm-hmm. uh, like Nate White, and uh, he uh, really has done a good job of promoting himself. A really good job promoting himself, and they've got a good show. And if, if you if you're really like really into straight ahead you know the country thing that's happening now mm-hmm. he's he's really good okay all right so that's tonight uh i take that back that's tomorrow night at the blue note tonight at rose we've got happy hour with flyover country they're always a, a good time a little bit later tonight at rose you've got porter union and hallie kearns i think that's sort of a bluegrass or bluegrass country thing as well let's see what else here cafe berlin what's today the 16th Nothing going on. But tomorrow night at Cafe Balloon, you got Cafe Balloon. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, at the Balloon, tomorrow night, you've got Rafco and Cantalooper and Katie Cowden. And Rafco, of course, that's uh, Ray Fitzgerald's new project. And I'm always talking about how much I enjoy her music. So maybe tomorrow night, Berlin's got something going on that you might like. The Ina Cook Band playing tonight at Roachport General Store. I think I'm probably going to... That's pretty, that's in my neck of the woods. I might woods. try to get out there, too. I Also, there's a, a visitation this evening for Babe Martin. Yeah, who died just and recently. And a funeral yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm playing with uh, Al Jolly from 10 to 12 tomorrow at uh, the Fall into Art. And then I'm also... We're also playing from 11 to 1. All right, so cool. Two of us. That's tomorrow. Yeah, well, I'm uh, sure Diana will probably be talking about tomorrow. A bit about Eleven to that. one on Sunday. All right. You're asking about other. I'm saying what other gigs do I have? Yeah, no, I, I have to mention. You know, uh, the annual Last Waltz show at the Blue Note, which I've been lucky to participate in. I'm unfamiliar. Tell uh, us about it. So, um, a couple years ago uh, was the 40th anniversary of the Last Waltz, and Pat K put together whole show with the voodoo players sean canaan out of st louis and then a whole bunch of guests you know like people that come in and mm-hmm. play the parts of all the yeah. guests from the last waltz sure yeah and did a whole reproduction show of the last waltz and uh it was just packed the blue note people went crazy and so the last two years since the first one um have been um He's done it again every year. It'd be the Friday after Thanksgiving, so next Friday. Then where's that performed? At the Blue Note. At the Blue Note. Yeah, okay. the whole whole show, and it's 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 wonderful. I mean, it's it's a reproduction of of the last, the last waltz. waltz. All right, fantastic. And uh, so that'll be fun, and I'm lucky enough to get to play a, a, a soprano solo in that. There's a song by the band called "It Makes No Difference." Which, if you if you go back and listen to that, Mike, it, it is just an it is just a fantastic song. Well, one of the one of the band members, um, Garth Hudson, mm-hmm. played the organ and some synthesizer, uh, and he also played um, uh, plays. Still does plays all the all woodwinds. Huh. He was brought up in a very heavily trained both mom and dad in Canada. 
uh, musical family. Well, when he joined the the band, they called him the director because he's actually the one that taught a lot of them how to like what a chord was um, and help with a lot of arrangements. So in that song, at the end of the song, it makes no difference. Uh, he steps out, and you can see it's on the last waltz too. You can see it or hear it. Um, plays a soprano sax solo on and so that I've been lucky enough to do that the last few years so it's always a lot of fun and also because there's like 25 musicians from Columbia down the green room waiting for taking right. their turns going off that's so cool. playing all the various parts of all the famous people that that played with the band during the last waltz so, so it's just a great get together of all the local oh my God. gang yeah hmm <laughs> All right, fantastic. Well, you got a lot of stuff going on. That's fantastic. I love uh, I love all the stuff you're involved in. It's good. And if you haven't heard Tony play, get out there. He's a great saxophone player. And if you're lucky, get to see him play the flute once in a while. Yeah, every once in a while. Yeah. You mentioned We Always Swing a little bit earlier. Are, you know Josh Chittum down there? Yeah. And who's the other guy that... Uh, John Poses, yeah, the director. Yeah, John. Yeah. You can play jazz. You can play the blues. You can play rock and roll. But do you ever concentrate on jazz and do anything with, with the jazz series? I think you did something. You told me just you yesterday. You know, every once in a while john has a little needs a little jazz trio or something and mm -hmm. he's used a lot of people but he does call me this week we did uh i played with um zach beeson mm. uh great great bass player um and uh travis mcfarland yeah and i played flute we did two hours uh the va had a thanksgiving dinner for homeless vets yeah and so this past wednesday we went there and played during the dinner about 100 people and it was wonderful right. absolutely wonderful crowd we played a lot of standards that people would recognize rather than esoteric jazz we, right no and had a great time it was really a lot of fun all right that sounds good let's play another song um i want to play one now and then we'll have time for maybe one more on the way out of here so why don't we pick one that you'd like i got, to... I got one for you to, well yeah i forgot what's on the list there's a song on there called Unraveled. That Unraveled. I that wrote, was one I was going to ask I about. wrote about, oh, it must have been five years ago. And it's it speaks for itself. But <laughs> I, I wrote it, and I, I was thinking about almost a Porgy and Bess kind of old man river sound with it. Uh -huh. And then my son, my older son, uh, who, um, by the way, we, oldest son, I have a two sons and a daughter yeah they're so all grown three, out three, of the house three children three children and our, and and we know that your one son's a hell of a bass player are your other kids musicians uh, as well my oldest son plays some guitar and so that means we had jamming but he is a linguist he's huh. he has like an eight plus personality <laughs> just does all kinds of stuff and spent many years overseas wow great um i have two grandchildren beautiful girls <laughs> of the and um his wife is extremely talented, um, three degrees, and is becoming a, one of the foremost knitting designers around. I'll be done. Uh, and they live in Bloomington. He's finishing up his um, doctorate at Illinois in State there? Uh, uh, Indiana. Oh, in University of Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, he's finishing up. I uh, went back to school, and he's close to finishing up his doctorate in linguistics. And then my daughter... Um, she is a special education teacher in uh, in her second year at Joplin High School. Great, and she's a fantastic teacher. Uh, they love her, and she's she was our jock. She played. Um, she has a great musical ear. She doesn't play. She took a little bit of piano and voice, but she actually does have an incredible ear. Um, but she wanted to be a jock and became a um, fast pitch softball player and I, I actually spent seven years on the road coaching and a whole nother part of my life and that's fantastic. and um she uh played two years in college and then um stopped playing to finish up her education degree and then once she but she kept working out well mm -hmm. now she's a champion crossfit Com computer comp in crossfit competition incredible uh, so a month ago she was on a team competing with 79 other teams in springfield i've never saw so much so many hormones in one room man. It was crazy <laughs> but uh they won they won wow. and now she's going to to other competitions and so she's yeah she's five two totally built you know in deadlift like i don't know 250 pounds over her head or something <laughs> 25 times in a row whatever it is that they right. do 
<laughs> so yeah, we're very very proud of our our children. All right, well, Melinda and I look at each other and go, well, you know, we must have done something right. So <laughs> it's all luck, Tony. All luck. <laughs> all right, we're gonna play uh, unraveled. Yeah. So this is uh, having children. This is me. Um, this is a song sketch. Uh, uh, I'm playing piano and singing. Um, Jake Hanselman, wonderful mm. drummer on great, drums, great drum player, and um, and Kevin Hennessy on bass. All right, cool. Finish that story. Yeah. So I was playing it at home. My son, actually Thanksgiving. My son Samson and my son Jeremiah, and I was playing it. And Samson, his travel, he said, "You know, one of the most." You have a son named Samson. Yeah, it's my oldest. That's Samson. fantastic. Um, one of the, he said, "You know, one of the, in his travel, he said one of the most." liked types of music world over is reggae it's mm, amazing yeah, how yeah, popular yeah. reggae is everywhere mm, mm-hmm. and so in the far east they just go crazy over reggae and he listened he read the words and he goes hey dad you know this the words sound like a reggae tune so i started messing around and it turned into kind of a reggae feel. all right all right here we go this is one uh, again from tony lotman and it's called unraveled you listen to it on open mic radio kopn columbia Oh, 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 
All right. I like it. Yeah. That's got a great feel to it. Yeah, I like that song. Well, it's amazing. You've written a whole bunch of different stuff. We've got some rock and roll stuff. We've got some blues stuff. We've got some reggae. we got some jazz. Yeah. You can do it all, Mr. Lotvin. Well, you know, I, I look at the words and I just kind of try to feel what kind of song it should be. I mean, I don't, I'm not really, um, since I'm not a straight ahead singer songwriter, so to speak, I just kind of see what kind of song it wants to be. You well, know? it's sort of interesting because you're a writer, though. In other words, you write a lot of lyrics, but, but you're a very skilled musician, and a lot of guys will write the song music first and then try to fit words to it. You almost go the other way, where you write the words and just see what it feels like and yeah, then try to sometimes, interpret that. Like the, a, a New Day, that actually started out with the bass lick. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I got the chorus and the bass lick together at the same time, but, um, but yeah, I do try to just kind of f- feel my way what to let the song emerge or organically to what it wants to be kind of the way i do it um but i do start a lot with lyrics yeah i'm very interested and always have been and really strong uh, melodies strong melodic sense so i spend a lot of time on the melodies all right so what else do i want to ask you what about the mid-missouri scene here few words just about the scene in general you've been in it for a long time uh do you have anybody in particular that you re- that you're really interested in right now or just in general you know what do you I think just, about what's going on you know i i just love the way it keeps growing and growing and growing there's so many bands and so many wonderful things happening um that i just enjoy listening and I, and it helps me get be it helps me to stay involved which is what i want to do I mean, I'm getting older, but I, I love playing. As long as I can get on a stage or hold an instrument, I'm going to keep playing. <laughs> um, and I've seen a lot of people come and go around here, but I just kind of persevere and keep keep my way, keep my my head going, keep my feet moving, and and keep playing. But there are just a prolific amount of of music happening in the community aside from uh, along with what's going on at the university yeah, and yeah. um it's it's really it's really fun to listen to and, f- and fun to witness i agree completely yeah that's the main reason why i do this show i'm not particularly musical myself i kind of mess around a little bit with the guitar and stuff but not like you know very good frankly but i'm such a fan of music and i have a decent ear and i know what i like and and i sure enjoy so much of the stuff that I see around here these days and, and uh, love to try to share a little bit of it, you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, well, Wonderful. it has been a pleasure, my friend. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, and we'll do this again. In fact, I think, um, when, when's your party? December the 7th? Uh, December the 7th, yeah. I think, I think I have a guest schedule for that morning, but you know how it works around here. You, the door's open, sort of. So okay. m- maybe Friday morning. Remind people 7th. then. Right? Yeah, come on in and just say hi for a few minutes, and we'll talk about your party for a couple minutes and That'd try to get fantastic. some people out for that. That'll be great. Thanks so much. Thanks yeah. for having me. I had a lot of good, good, fun time on a Friday morning. Well, I like doing it, and I appreciate you coming down. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you again soon. And we'll play another one from Tony here on the way out. What should we, what should we close with, Tony? Uh, well, let's see. You can either do uh, It's a Dog Life, which I love dogs. <laughs> it's a, my, a kind of country song about a dog dreaming he was a human and a human dreaming he was a dog. Sounds about right. Uh, we can do that, or you can play a short, uh, crazy f- flute thing that I did with uh, Chris Graham. You I get th- your, ch- your choice. Okay, I think we're going to do It's a Dog's Life because all right. it sort of reminds me of my own. And uh, All right, everybody, that's Tony Lotvin, and we'll talk to, to Tony again one of these days and certainly catch him out and about uh, when he's out there playing in town. Now, uh, the program is about wrapping up here. I would like to say that I will be away next weekend for Thanksgiving. I'm not sure who will be sitting in for me. I'll check with Sarah. She did such a wonderful job with Violet Vondahar last time I was away. But regardless, I will be gone next week. And then on the 30th, we'll be back with uh, the Gold Bugs are doing a reunion show on the 31st. And we'll have John Galbraith again and Jason and Ben or Nick, I guess I should say. Uh, we'll have them in the station on the 30th and maybe we'll get those guys to play some songs for us but anyway gold bugs reunion coming up Steve, that'll be a lot of fun i'm not sure exactly where it is but we'll find out in a couple weeks all right in the meantime stick around we got diana with speaking of the arts coming up she always has a great program in fact i guess tony your wife is going to be on uh, diana's show yeah talking about fall into art fall into art parquet plaza this weekend that's going on this weekend and you'll be performing there right that's true 
Okay, there you go. So if you want to see Tony, you can do it this weekend. It's Mike. You've been listening to uh, Open Mic Radio on KOPN Columbia. And this is called It's a Dog's Life. Tony Lofman, once again. Thanks, man. Just a lazy dog laying in the shade Waiting for my master to come Just a lazy dog dreaming in my sleep Chasing rabbits one by one Running in my sleep Growling in my sleep, chasing rabbits like when I was young. Oh my, how I wish I was a human. I'd be sitting at the table with my good friends, eating all that good food. Yes, sir. But if I was a people, I'd quit chasing rabbits. Find me a good home Well, it's a dog's life In the dog days of Missouri All them hot days All them hot nights Yes, it's a dog's life In the dog days of Missouri With all them hot days All them hot nights Just a lazy man Laying in the shade Waiting for nobody Just a lazy man Dreaming in my sleep Chasing women one by one I love them in my sleep Wishing I could keep chasing women Like when I was young Oh my How I wish I was a canine I'd lay under the table With my good self And just gnaw on a good bone Yes, sir But if I was a canine I'd have to quit chasing women And find me a good home It's a dog's life in the dark Good night.